and we are going what's going on with everybody it's your boy air aka young god coming to you live in the orange dungeon getting into your real raw rugged and uh i got somebody special on the other line man and you know usually i let niggas introduce themselves but let me give you an introduction you feel me man let, let, let me let me do it for you man this guy right here i found out about this dude in the midst of listening to some rap songs because i'm like what is this style of rap and everybody like bro look up mike mike is one of the ones i'm like who the hell is mike let me see what this nigga talking about man you know what i'm saying nigga said he got some war in his pen man let me see what that war hitting for man you know what i'm saying that's the first thing i heard ever since then bro not only have you amazed me you have gotten better you know what i'm saying i, I brought up one bar last interview you said uh, you said ever since I dropped the weight, like like the pen been getting better. You know what I'm saying? And you was like, bro, you need catch that because you was talking about dropping weight of the world and dropping weight. I'm like, what well, is this nigga hill, boy? This <laughs> Mike, man. So I just want to say I have somebody on my other line who I really appreciate on a music level and also on a human level because the nigga's been nothing but real to me. There we have it. We have Big Mike, man. How you doing, my boy? My dog, thank you so much, man. I'm blessed, man. Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm here with the Eric the Young Legend, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I ain't even gonna hold you subconsciously. I, I just read a comment because I just interviewed No Name. Shout out to No Name, also a very, no, very, go, very man. lovely woman. Uh, I read a comment recently. Somebody said, "Take that L. Introduce your introduce your guest. You 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 a professional <laughs> prick." I was like, "God damn." <laughs> Yeah, I think it's tweaking. I think it's uh, like, take that. <laughs> I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> I was like, God damn, man. But, uh, so going in here, I was like, well, let me introduce this nigga. <laughs> I don't want to take another hell. But, uh, <laughs> but nah, man, uh, what it was about like a year and a half ago since the last time we did an interview, man. Was, what's been going on since then? Man, just working and shit. Really just working. Uh, and learning and shit. But mostly working, doing a lot of working. But you know, the work, learn, experience. We've been having a lot of fun too, and it all, it all kind of work hand in hand and shit. But just trying to do the most of all of it, uh, at least while I'm like still like able to, you know. So a couple things about working, and since the last time we did the interview, first before I forget to say this, I had a little beef with you because I did not know that was Nayante. In the in the background, in our yeah, last interview, yeah. because I didn't know who he was, I didn't know Brad at all. I didn't know who he was until Come after on. that interview, and I'm like, bro, I was I was in the presence of a goddamn Florida legend. You feel me, man? <laughs> shout out to my guy, Nayante, man. I had no idea Come that was Brad. So shout out to Brad, and that was Disco when we had did that interview. That was around yeah. Disco time, bro. Since then, you have came out what three tapes, right? Because you had. You had Beware the Monkey, the collab tape with Wiki and Alchemist, yeah, and now this one. So that's, bro, what is, nigga, you working like a, a you feel me, nigga working like he trying to put food on the table, man, you know what I'm saying, man? We is, bro, that's the whole thing. Where, and what you said, what, what that boy said, I was really in the crib, hungry, really trying, you know what I'm saying, really finna lick something, you hear me? And that's one of my favorite bars ever, bro. <laughs> me and my homeboy always laugh, we were like, Hey, bro, Mike a big-ass nigga, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nigga might try to take something from you, but you might just want to get that shit off. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, no, where where does that work ethic come from? Is that something that you had to build, or is this something like, even before music, did you have a, a crazy work ethic, or is this something that's, like, new? Uh, I feel like when I was first kind of doing the music thing, I was, like, working OOD, but that's just because, like... I feel like I was, like, working to get out of something or to get towards something. And it just drove me to, like, music was just my life. And I feel like um, it's kind of like I gave my life to music. And I, I feel like as a reset, I've been, like, low-key, like, getting back into that same bag, just kind of, like, accepting the fact that, like, music is what I do, you know? Like, it's kind of, like, my, my main thing. So that's why I said pay most attention to shit. That's interesting. You say you gave your life to music because I've been uh I've been a very big critic, man, of like a lot of mainstream hip hop that I've been hearing, like specifically this year. I feel like it's a lot of soulless records been coming out. A lot of just like you know what I'm saying I feel like it's a lot of records coming out on some like 
oh, this is going to be a hit on TikTok. Nigga ain't even really liking the song they making. They just uninspired. This finna be a hit on TikTok. And I don't really feel like niggas have put they all into music. So when I hear a nigga put they, like, I'm not going to lie. I hear a nigga like, <laughs> I hear a nigga like NBA Youngboy sometimes. I'm like, bro, this nigga put everything into the song. Like, but this, <laughs> this nigga ain't leave nothing. This nigga put everything. And it's funny because you and NBA Youngboy, two different types of music, but I feel the the passion that both of y'all put. Was there a moment that you felt like I got to put, because you, you said, I, I'm, I'm dedicating my life to this. Was, was was that the first time we heard you? Was your life already dedicated to music, or did that come later on? Uh, I, I would say kind of like, between, I, I had this project called Longest Day, Shortest Night, and uh, May God Bless Your Hustle. I think somewhere in between those two projects, I was like, all right. I need to, I need to like do this thing for real because it's kind of like all I got. Was there was there any dream before music? Like before you started mm-hmm. making music? Before you started making music, was there another dream? Uh, not really. Look, he like at one at one point I wanted I thought about making like being like a comic book like creator dude. Like I had a cousin who knew how to draw really well and, and like comic book style. And I had an idea like. Maybe one day we'll like start our own comic book company and shit, or some shit like that. But very like young, young idea. But I think once music, like once I like felt like I could make music, I kind of was like, this is what I gotta do. And that was like thirteen, fourteen. But shit didn't really click that like this would be like um, the like lifestyle that I would chose that I chose kind of until after I graduated high school. You're a very artful guy, so that's interesting about the comic book thing because, like, the art direction for Burning Desire, um, with the with the knife. At first, I was like, "Nigga, is that Mavi? You feel me? I seen that shit, nigga, with the low trail. Like, is that Mavi on the cover?" But <laughs> <laughs> like, Mavi just stabbing nigga. What the fuck that nigga got going yeah. on? <laughs> but uh, that is a very like. Is that is is that a reference from something? Like, is that a like it looked this was like a classic like zombie film like movie like i took a i always tell people they say like nigga what i took a zombie class in college literally what nigga i've watched every zombie movie you could ever (laughs) name you know what i'm saying so (laughs) watch like looking at this this looks like something from like those classic 1960s like very early zombie films was this inspired by something or like like who made the art like what's the background on that it kind of so the i was inspired by a lot of different things but I tried to keep the concept that had to do with the mask uh, as um, true to like his actual history. Mm-hmm. So the mask comes from Cote d'Ivoire and um, like, like Liberia, like the Dan tribe. It's kind of like exists in both both places, and um, it's based after this guy named Garire, mm. who is like it's supposed to be a spirit that lives in the forest and that. The people of the tribe like call him out to help, uh, like help solve like any problems between the people and any disputes and stuff. So, his so I kind of just try to like use like using the historical facts, and then also I wanted to use a kind of like American horror tropes, like Michael Myers, to uh, create like this new like horror like slasher kind of guy who's like which is the funny thing that I was trying to do is do the thing of usually like Americans do the like uh, other country like trope and then whatever so I was like it'd be cool to do the American trope but like with an Af- like African uh, you know thing to it so that's hard it's like um I feel like you being like having African roots um do you find that like important to like incorporate that in the music like to show you know what I'm saying to kind of show that yeah I, I think yeah I feel like more so than showing it I be finding out a lot uh, by incorporating it because it makes me do a lot of research so I feel like the work kind of becomes like my research like uh, like thesis I guess so just like like all the work that I've done in the sense of research but now musical form or visual form like uh, I had bought the mask a minute ago, but then this project is what kind of made me do a lot of research on the mask and find out what it's about. So. Are you a smart ass nigga, bro? 
<laughs> I appreciate that, bro. <laughs> we were just talking about me graduating college, nigga. You are hey, a smart bro. nigga, man. Come on. You Congratulations are... to my blood. I appreciate that, man. You're a smart guy. Is that like... Because like, I feel like I've heard you speak about things like non-music related. And you seem to be like a very knowledgeable person. Like, growing up, like, were you a person that liked like books or like documentaries like did you seek out information a lot or did that come later in life uh I, i'm not gonna lie i say it came a little bit later For real? i was like i think i just uh i think i think i've always had like a kind of creative mind but i'm also very uh i have a very low attention span low key mm. so like in school and stuff i used to just like that shit used to bust my ass terribly. Um, but after I graduated, or kind of before I graduated, like 12th grade, I kind of started linking with hella, um, I had hella homies that used to go to this art school in Cooper Union. Like, uh, the homie used to make music, some regulars, and then the homie Jasper as well, uh, Slauson Alone, he used to go to Cooper. And there's like a lot of homies doing the art shit. This is how I know a lot of the, like, niggas that's doing this shit now. But they, like, I'll go to their art shows and they will invite me to their shit or, like, just put me on a hella crazy shit that, like, I just be like, what the fuck? And then figure out how to incorporate that shit, you know? And, and really traveling as well, I think, helps me. Because I'm very easily, like, it's very easy for me to go somewhere and just pick up information and shit. Bro, I say that all the time. Like, during, like, COVID, doing, like, when everybody was quarantining, I felt like, I was kind of creatively just kind of like just tapped out because going outside, going, seeing new things, it could be, goddamn, I'm seeing some trees, some plants, some whatever. Like that really can just like spark motivation. And like you said, going out of the country, seeing different yeah. stuff like that really, you know what I'm saying? Like, has there been a country, cause you've been out of the country. Has there been countries you've been to that kind of just like tapped you into a different type of like mindset? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh... Portugal. Mm. We went to uh, Lisbon. That shit was fucking amazing. That shit was like, it's just so beautiful. Like, it was a really pretty place. Um, people were really nice. There was a lot of black people out there, which was like crazy for like a European country. Because I feel like in a lot of European countries, you always see black men, but you never see no black women. Yeah. Which, which be busting my head because I'm like. Y'all got him stuck at the crib or something? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, That's funny. Going on? But over there, it was like, you can really see everybody. Everybody outside having fun. And maybe we was out there at like a lit time, but it just seemed like everybody was just so like focused on like having a good time, which was felt really good. Um, yeah, it's just this nice uh England as well is one place that I love the architecture and it like makes me like want to like do film shit. Yeah. I think I did talk about that last time. Yeah. Man. How's the food out there? <coughs> Terrible, low key. I go a lot, <laughs> but <coughs> the thing about um, England, you gotta eat like the ethnic food, like Jamaican food or like Nigerian. Food. Indian food, like that, should be the actual, like that should definitely be better than the shit you'll get over here. You know yeah. what I mean? Because them niggas be like, really like from where they like where they from. You know what I mean? Funny enough, uh, now that you say that, we definitely talked about this exact thing. I think we talked about their food, and you said it was trash. Because I remember somebody commented like, like, come on, bro, like, 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 <laughs> like, 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 I'll make you some beans or something. They say, make you some beans oh, or some God. shit. Like, nobody would, like. Bro, I, 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 mean, I mean, I'm like, I feel like I'm half English, so I be wanting to like, I'm like, bro, don't make it worse, bro. Don't make it worse. Wait, let me see if I can find this picture, bro. I feel like I seen a nigga pull up a picture with like, nigga had like some fries with like some beans on the top of the fries. Yeah, see, bro. that's the that's the, that's the crazy one. The English breakfast is hard. I get the English breakfast, but without the beans. But I'm just in general not really a beans guy. What do you uh, while I put this picture? What are you? Uh, what are you eating these days? Cause like you said, you don't. You know what I'm saying, man. Dropping the weight. You know what I'm saying. What's 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 what's, what's, what's the food looking I mean, like, man? I'm not gonna lie. If you want me to be honest, the homies like any of my good homies will tell you this too. 
I stay yeah, I stay like with a brand Zeno fish. <laughs> okay. Really? What's that? It's just like a fish, like a, I stay like a grilled Branzino sea bass. Uh, whole, whole, whole grilled fish, maybe like what else? Yeah. That's really all I be trying to eat. I can't lie. This is a good grilled fish. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And, 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 yeah. <laughs> Niggas be making it hard, bro. Niggas be making it hard. Hey man, before I throw up, man, let's get to this album, man. <laughs> let's, let's get to this album. But actually, I, I want to work back from "Beware the Monkey" because that's that's what we kind of left off at when we did "Disco." That was the next album, so I want to work my way back from there to to now. Um, because "Beware the Monkey," bro, that was I don't know where that ranked, but that was definitely my favorite albums of last year, like by far. Jeez, like goodness gracious, and I want to start off with something that surprised me because. You did it again, bro. I feel like when niggas get on a song with you, niggas really do like get in a get in a different bag. Like, cause you was my introduction to sideshow. When I heard that nigga say he had fucked up braids, he was trying to get paid. I was like, bro, yeah, we need to support this young man, bro. We need to support this young man right here. When I heard that bar, man. Fast forward, I DM'd this man when I heard this verse. When I heard King Carter on concrete, oh, bro. I said, I don't know if you ever seen the Shaq meme where he like, I'm, I wasn't familiar with your game. I apologize. I had to apologize. <laughs> I wasn't familiar with King Carter's game, bro. Hey, I just want to know, dude. was that verse as crazy to you as it was to me? Like that nigga spazzed yeah, nah, on that. He, 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 he blew. <laughs> I mean, he blew niggas' minds, but we already know King like for that. Like when King delivered one of those ones, like you already, you already know it. But that that one. Cause <clears throat> I had been did my verse and then he put his shit on there and I was like, fuck, like this nigga just fucking slid. Like and then and then my favorite ones be when somebody else hop on the, the beat and it makes sense. It make what you saying make sense. And I and I was like, yo, King, like it takes a special kind of person to like do do stuff like that, you know, and I'd be like, that's a Crazy. And then that beat, did you? That's, that's your beat. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh, that beat is so amazing. You, the way you came in, going crazy. The way he came in, it was just that's like the perfect song. So that was one of my songs of the year, one of my features of the year. That is an amazing song. And then something that you do on this album that you did on the uh, most recent album as well. Bro, we need more. I told us a no name, funny enough. I love, and it's very different. Uh, Y'all have very different approaches to it, but I love when she sings. I like when you sing, bro. <laughs> on that, on that, uh, uh, baby, what would I do to be give me all of you? Hey, you was, I love that. Like, do you, like, do you have fun with that? Because I feel like you, it sounds like you having fun when you be nah, putting nah, your singing yeah. in. If, if, if I'm singing in that job, definitely in, like, a specific bag, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because I feel like I like your singing so much because you got that deep, you know what I'm saying? Nigga down and sound like Barry White. You got one of them type of voices, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> when you sing, it doesn't sound like anybody else. It sound like, like, it sound very unique to you. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like uh, you got like a very I, I, I compare it to a nigga like J. Cole. When J. Cole sings like like J. Cole got like a very like he's not like fucking you know what I'm saying? Uh, this world singer or whatever. But when he sings, he, I feel it like in his soul. Like it's very unique to him. And when you do that singing, it's very catchy. It's very unique. So. Hey man, I ain't nobody, but bruh, when you, you know what I'm saying? You want to you do some more of that, bruh? Very much appreciated when you sing. It's hey, so good. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Hey, man. I got you next job, man. Don't worry. I appreciate I, that, man. Some more than singer jobs in there for you. Bro. Nigga need that, man. And then the rapping is at an all-time high on here. Like, like on Tapestry, I'm like, bro, what is this nigga on, bro? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what is this nigga on? Like, I feel like this album, you were rapping. Every, at, every time I hear you, you're rapping at a higher level. So at this point, I'm like, oh, this is the best I've ever heard him just write. At a technical level, you know what I'm saying. So, I I just want to say thank you for these raps. You feel me, bro? Thank you for the. Is there a song on here 
even though this is about a year ago, is there a song on you hear that still kind of sit with you, like still kind of resonate with you the most? Uh, on that song, you feel me? Uh, we got Tapestry, Stop, we got the sister Nancy join on here. Yeah, I, I honestly, I say the, the last track is closing credits. Yeah, why? Um, I feel like I like entered like a bag in there that was uh, I, I'll, I'll always be happy or proud of myself when I can explain the juxtaposition that my life is. Mm. So, like the last last track felt like a big one of those, and then like. This felt very atmospheric. I always feel like Lauren Hill when I listen to that song. <laughs> Interesting. And I feel like Damn Near had a Lauren Hill vibe. Is the, uh, is the, is it I Party Park? Am I saying that right? Yeah. With Klein, that was my first time hearing Klein. Klein is fire. I didn't, so, even, I didn't even know about Klein before that. Klein is one of the, like, when it comes to, like, art, what I was saying earlier, even about me and people, I was like, are going to places. When I, when I had went to England and, like, met Klein, that's another one that was, like, all right, my brain just, like, boom, super expansion. Like, that's, like, an artistic, like, real pillar in this shit. For real. Amazing, bro, that, and that, I love to beat the... <laughs> and the way that, you was... Oh, my God. That, 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 that's definitely why that still resonated with me. That's so. amazing. And then, out of nowhere... I wake up one day and I see Faith is a Rock. And I'm like, what is happening right now? Like, what is going on? Bro, my favorite, I just have to get into it, bro. My favorite beat on here, and it's probably my favorite song because it's just so good. I love Thug Anthem. Thug Anthem, that hey, beat. Uh, oh, my <laughs> gosh, man. Nah, that's, that, that's definitely my shit, too, Kayla. That is a great beat. But before we get to this, how did this album even come about? Cause I remember the EP. I remember a little small EP came out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how, how did I birth into this album? We um. So basically, I guess uh, Pada had hit out um about doing like a thing. They wanted it to be like on some like New York based shit, and then Alchemist had just put me and Wiki up, and they was down for it. And then, but it was crazy because like. I, I, I got so much love for Alchemist, bro. Like, even him, like, thinking of me to, like, put me in a situation like that. Like, that shit is so much love. And, like, even helping create that bridge between, like, this newer generation and, like, an older generation. Or, like, even with Wiki, that's, like, somebody that I looked up to when I was, like, first making music in the city. And being able to reconnect that bridge again on, like, a grand scale, just so important, you know what I mean? So... I got mad love for, for Alchemist for helping out that situation and Patta, but yeah, and then uh, me, but basically me and Whip been wanting to do some shit for a minute, so that was just a, a better opportunity to like make that shit happen. So then we was at it. We had did the three tracks, but from the beginning we was always like, yeah, like this, we should carry this, like keep like carry this shit on and like low key like turn this into something like full, you know what I mean? So then since then, we just had kept writing this shit. Alchemist kept sending us more beats. And we yeah, we just kept at it, really. Like, like we have been writing, like, making that shit since the beginning. Like, we first uh, released the Patty shit, you know what I mean? Blood is tape, man. Um, and then after that, you get, uh, is, is, is that song next? Yeah, Mayor's a Cop next. And oh, yeah. I love the way Wiki comes. The Mayor's a Cop! You know what I'm saying? <laughs> With his voice, I love the way he comes in. He got that very distinct that voices you know what I'm saying and it's yeah, interesting that. because you got a distinct voice he got a distinct voice it's interesting to hear that over Alchemist who has such distinct <coughs> production you know what I'm saying so yeah, I feel yeah. like that's why that's one of the more unique rap tapes to me because every body that's affiliated with that tape has very distinct styles that when you hear Alchemist beat oh them Alchemist drums when you hear Wiki Rap, oh, I know that voice. When you hear yeah. your flow, oh, that's the mic. Flow. You know what I'm saying? So very distinct, and I feel like it all meshed together because sometimes things could be so distinct that it don't work out. It's like, yeah, this is, you know what I'm saying, like a, a style clash type of thing. But yeah. it was absolutely beautiful. 
Um, I appreciate that. Shit. For sure. What did you, you say? You had a bar on here where I was like, "This nigga's crazy." What did you, you said, "Try bandaging the pain, but I'm scratching with a scrape saw." Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was gonna pray for him. Oh my gosh, <laughs> man. And that's what I was gonna talk about. So before we start recording, I was telling you about college and psychology and everything. Uh, and I wanted to ask you a question because it feels like this. Do you journal at all? Like not even music wise, but just like journal, like on a. Uh, I, I I tried it like two years ago, but I fell off. It's hard for me to stay consistent when it comes to like those kind of things. But I would be trying to treat the rapping as like my journal for real. That's what I was gonna say. When you your lyrics feels like we're reading your journal sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like and it feel it damn near feel too personal. Like bro, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be hearing this right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It feels like we're literally reading or listening to your journal. So that's why I asked that because I was like, I wonder are the raps is journaling because if it's so introspective. Like I, I've asked you that before, I think. Like like how do you write so introspective? I bring this interview up I remember, I bring this up all the time, but I remember Drake asked Kodak one time. He was like, Bro, I would listen to your album and like how did you write like this? Like how did you write so introspectively? How did you talk about your life? so vulnerably and that's how that's the question i got for you like how do you do that like do you treat it like you're journaling is it just raps to you is it therapy to you because it feels like we're in a therapy session sometimes yeah i i, I think I, I i think it comes for like I, I have a couple of different things that i think about life that i feel like i incorporate in my, in my music or my writing that or even one thing I always think is that like the best thing you be able to do low key about the worst things in life is life about them. And I feel like sometimes in my raps that's what I be trying to strike on is a uh, the like damn like shit this shit is so crazy like mm. but kind of still alive and still here going through this shit and, and, and still being able to smile because all that shit is parallel with the other shit you know what I mean so kind of yeah like I don't know I just try to, I, I, I think the best way I, I've put it recently is kind of like on some pain on some pain and shit is that you want to be able to feel the, the, the full feeling and not just one emotion, you know, like the sadness, the tear jerking, and then the happiness and the, like, gladness, and then, like, or at least that's, that, that's my favorite type of art, where shit is moving so fast, you might get a sneak peek of shit that you're not supposed to see. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like, or it's like when you at the homie crew and niggas chilling, playing PS2, and then, you just hear it. you like hear something that you're not supposed to hear like it's like it's like some real family shit you know what I mean like but like that be the shit that like make you feel like now you're a part of that family you know what I mean like so and on top of that I think something interesting that you said is like evoking all those emotions from like you said like the happy the the tear jerking the laughter everything in one and I feel like really your discography it like encapsulates that like from going from like start to now i feel like i felt every single emotion in your music and it's so interesting because i feel like we've grown with you almost like you said like we hearing stuff we're not supposed to hear from the crazy stuff sad stuff happy stuff you have encapsulated everything and that's rare not everybody could do that because a lot of niggas music is just one note this 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 you've hit on it every single note more recently i feel like you've been on a much more higher note you know what i'm saying much more happier note i feel like in your music and i just want to thank you for sharing that because i feel like sometimes that could be uncomfortable so i know what i'm saying nigga appreciate that hey appreciate that so very thank you for sure man. man that's some of the best art that's like that hey man we trying man we trying for sure man one of my favorite <laughs> films of all the time one of my favorite films of all the time snow on the bluff I, I, bruh, nigga, I, I laughed at that movie. I got a little scared when he grabbed the people the first time. Yeah. Nigga, when the baby mama died, nigga, I'm not, I, I, I died there. Shed a tear, man. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That nigga, what he told his son, mama ain't coming back. I said, God damn, man. Yeah. Fire so, films. So, 
But it's, it's good to show you the whole thing, bro. Exactly. So it, 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 even them starting it from the from the, the white people, the white people sitting because like yeah, show them everything. Like show them like how how it like start. You know what I mean? Like for real. Hey, if anybody's watching this right now, you've never seen Snow on the Bluff. Go watch Snow on the Bluff. Yeah, that's a good movie. Go watch. Great yeah. film. I think, um, it, I think it was on Hulu or Netflix. Netflix, it was on Netflix. It was on Netflix. Yeah, it was on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go watch that. Um, but then we go into today and we go into what you just dropped. Freaking Burning Desire. Um, Hell yeah. I'm going to start off like this. Nigga, do you have alternative song of the year on possibly rap album of the year? Because I don't know what you would classify uh, which one is it should be. I don't know what you classify that song as. That is, I'm like nigga, I'm, I'm on the right album still. Like, what? like this is crazy. Like, and that, and I start off with that because that was the um that was in like the little trailer that you put out. That was the song, and I'm thinking like, okay, this is a sample. He gonna start rapping over it. I'm like, nah, this ain't even a rap song. This is some whole other like you know like. Did you produce that? Yeah. You're nuts. First of all, you're nuts. <laughs> I need to. What's the background of that song? Because that is the most different thing I've heard you do. Hey, it's uh, really. I had made the loop and then uh, made the loop. Played the. Uh, I like be, be fucking around with Ableton like stock sounds and shit. And then I just found one of the like synths on Ableton and just played like a weird little synth thingy on it. And then uh, my friend Leela. I sent it to my friend Lila. She put some crazy ass vocals on it. So crazy, so crazy. That's one of them songs I feel like needs to be like in a, like you think of like in a Jordan Peele film or something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like a very. <laughs> yeah, creepy. I hope so. You need, you need to tap in, man. Hey, tap in, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Ragged. You know what I'm saying? Tap in with a real nigga. That, that's it's like that's really when I heard that I was like, this nigga is on another level because this is not even a rap song. <laughs> This is like what? What genre is that? As an alternative song? I, I, hey, man, it might be hip hop. You never know. Is it hip hop? I think it might be. It's on the. It's on the hip hop album. It is on the hip hop album, so, man. It is on the hip hop yeah. album. Regardless of genre, that song is definitely crazy, and hey, that that was something that stood out. But goodness gracious, bro, this might be honestly, maybe speaking too soon. This might be your best album. I feel like hey, this is dude, crazy, bro. From I mean, I don't even know where to start. Muscle Beach is, come on, bro. This nigga El Custo. I just hey, found out about bro a couple months ago. He's the goat, bro. bro. You know what? I know it's crazy. What's up? Can I actually check my text messages because I think he might be here right now. Do your thing. Do your thing. Do your <laughs> thing. As you text your, if you, as you check your text messages, I'm gonna tell a story about how I found out about this nigga. All right. All right yeah. All right. Look, he's at the door. I'm about to ask him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get, yeah, 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 get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. This the homie, man. What's going on, man? Yo. What's poppin', man? What's poppin', man? What's good with you? What's up, Tyler? What's poppin' with you, my boy? Alright, so, uh, what was that? So, yeah, uh, how I found out about El Custo, man. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying, man? Hey, like, that guy's special, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Muscle Beach is crazy, but how I found out about him, the first song I heard was Nitro. And I'm like, yo, this nigga's crazy. That nigga said, uh... What that nigga said, nigga said, I'm speaking from my point of view of a nigga who got bitches. I'm like, oh, bro, this oh, nigga, that nigga say, what that nigga say, Ralph Lauren button up my mama think I'm cross dressing. I say, what? <laughs> I say, what this nigga here talking crazy, man. Oh, so when I heard him on Muscle Beach, I heard Nayante on this Muscle Beach, and I heard you come in, and I'm like, this might be song of the year because that that beat I ain't never heard you rap over nothing like that. I'm like, this <laughs> is hard. So uh, how did like like was y'all just all in the studio one day? How that song came about? Uh, that shit was basically like uh, we we had just met uh Pusto on the party park, park tour, and then uh we he played at the Baltimore show, and then uh, we just kept kicking it after that shit. The niggas had came back to New York, Kusto had pulled us in New York, and then um we was just at the crib. We started rapping on a, on a, a whole different beat, and then everybody was kind of like, yeah, like we're not really fucking with our verses. And then we picked a different beat. Tay, I think, I think Tay had had his verse, and then Kuso had his shit, and then I I did my shit. But it was like 
it was crazy because it just happened so seamlessly. Like, and niggas was not expecting to, like, come with, like, a banger like that. You know what I mean? Like, that shit was crazy. Is that, is that a DJ Black Power beat? Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we we talk about you being a rapper. We we don't talk about enough how you might be like one of the best producers out, top five. Gee, come on. You know what I'm saying, bro? You is and, and it's funny because I didn't even talk about speaking about producers. I didn't even talk about the little short interlude in between these two albums. Or no, I think it might have been before the uh, Faith Is a Rock album. You on one of my favorite songs of the year, Bless. Uh, oh, on geez, Alchemist bro. Joint. With, with you and, Sasha. Oh my gosh, bro! Like, like when I like this, that that's like an example of like, oh, his writing is at a different level. Like, you're writing at the highest level I feel like you've ever been. Like, that is potent, bro. What that nigga say? Bless, uh, dropping jewels I haven't thunk yet. You know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> nigga. And then Sasha, what that boy say, man? Cupid don't shoot arrows, he shoot two, two, three. Oh my Come gosh. On, bro. <laughs> That, 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 that nigga wrote his ass off on that joint. Hey, man. Also, you know what I'm saying? For anybody watching this right now that might be influential, let me shoot my shot, man. Hey, man. Alchemist, you want to get interviewed on the channel, man? You know what I'm saying? Hey, you, come you're on. more than welcome. You know what I'm saying, man? You know, I'm interviewing Wiki in a couple more weeks. So let me get everybody from Faithless Rock on here, man. But, uh, but, uh, but yes, Muscle Beach is, is, is nuts. And the album in general, bro, why I say I feel like it's your best is because I, I feel like we're hearing a different version of Mike. And you're branching out more, like even more braggadocious bars, even more uh how you start off how you start off the song, nigga say, I got flying out bitches money. Hi right, I got flying bitches out money. Come I said, nigga, this is my nigga. He said, I got flying bitches out money. Hiding in the couch money. I got so much pouch nigga, I think niggas out for me. OG show me foul money. Tevi show me out money. Still be hella proud with all the shit I did without money. What? <laughs> Come on, man. Like, stuff like that. What you say, nigga said, uh, what's the bar about the black strippers? Nigga said, uh, what you say? <laughs> in the club, only slurging on the black strippers. <laughs> <laughs> I love them type of bars, man. Hey, You're. Man. You're you're great the with the one line. Also, like you, you already know what we going to club. You know we know what we going. To do. <laughs> we know what we going. To do. <laughs> that is hilarious, man. Um, but yeah, and, and and it's it's just like from the content, it's it's crazy. From the 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 just the music in general, like you know who you got on your album? Who's a cheat code? <clears throat> Live is a cheat code, bro. Liv is one of the people where it's like she she on one of my other favorite songs of the year. She got a song on Maxwell album called Both Handed and her Hell hook yeah. is crazy. She do uh, yeah. it all again. What would you do? She, she, She's she crazy. got one of them voices, bro. So this is why I say she's a cheat code. She was featured, I forget the name of it, and it's funny because Alchemist produced it. She was on the uh, Earl album, the Feet of Clay album. And Ooh. I I think they sampled something, but they couldn't clear it. So she, yeah, they yeah, replayed yeah. it she with her voice. Uh, yeah. Nigga, I thought that was a sample that entire time. <laughs> I interviewed somebody and they told me like, nah, that's not a sample. That's live. Yeah, yeah, that's live. And I'm that's like, live. what? Like she, right. her voice is an instrument. She got one of them voices. Like I thought like that's one of them like original voices, bro. Low key. Like, like when it comes to the soul, like even just low key soul music, bro. Low key, that's one of them original voices, bro. And I, I, you listening, you think maybe and if I didn't if I didn't look at the track list or know any better, I would think, oh, that nigga going crazy with a crazy sample or something. But no, that's <laughs> not a sample. That's live. And that's such a beautiful song, man. Such a beautiful song. Is that? Hey, what's up? Like, what's hey, 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 hold on, but hold on, time out. Like, did you hear what I was saying about your verse? Nah, I ain't gonna hold you. My, my hurt terrible, bro. I'm, I'm tapped in though. I'm right. So here. real quick, bro. <laughs> I was just saying how I found out about you. Uh, it was somebody sent me that was like, bro, this nigga crazy. It was Nitro, nigga. That is one of the craziest songs ever, bro. That what you hey, say, bro? Love, but, bro. but what you say, bro? Nigga say I'm speaking from my point of view. Nigga got bitches. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, hold on, one more, one more. What you say, nigga? Say, nigga? Say, raffle on button up. My mama think I'm cross dressing. You feel me, man? Yeah. Come on, man. that's 
Yeah. Nigga, love that, bro. I just want to let you know you one of my new favorite artists. And whenever you, we got to get you on here, got to get your interview, yeah. bro. I've been rocking with you for a little minute, man. So. No, I'm with that, bro. I'm definitely with that. And I, I want you to know, but I really appreciate that love, big boy. For sure. For, so serious. For sure. Hey, we'll, we'll tap in after this interview. I'll let you, I heard you say you got to do your verse. I'll let you do your thing. I just want to let you know, nigga, really rock with you. And your muscle beat shit. Crazy, your verse on message is hey, just crazy. My nigga, thank you, bro. You just like that's love, bro. <laughs> you guys made my night, nigga. I appreciate that, my boy. Hey, peace, blessed, love, light to you, big boy. Hey, you stay up, my boy. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, man, this album is nuts. Uh, bless you. Um, thank you, bro. African sex freak fantasy. First of all, that's a that's a crazy ass name to a, a, a song. <laughs> <laughs> African sex freak fantasy, but that beat. Muscle Beach and that beat, I'm like, damn, I ain't really never heard him over nothing like that. Um, were you trying to go for like a different type? Were you trying to branch out, or is this just, or do you do you even think this is different for you? I, I'm not gonna lie, I I feel like uh, it's weird because I be forget that there's like music that I make that people, that I don't be releasing that like people don't be hearing, but like is I was like. It was mad funny because everybody was like, oh, like, I know Mike had this in him, like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, like, I, I, I could do that low key. <laughs> like, yeah. like, but it, it, it's cool. Though. I mean, really, I feel like what that was about is just like wanting to like make music that like I like to listen to. And uh, I fuck with, like, the producer who made that is the producer God, G A W D. Mm-hmm. Bruh fucking ridiculous producer like insane with it and uh I love his music I love the music he got with this other rapper Wi-Fi guy and he he had sent me a pack and I was just like yeah like I've been bumping this shit so much I'm about to like make like make some shit that I could like a bump of my own you know what I mean like fuck he uh you you know who's a producer who I know you're cool with and I don't think you got anything out with him at least publicly uh, uh, we need. Who? I said, you know who's a producer that you cool with, but I don't think you got nothing out with him publicly yet. We need some shit with you and Popstar Benny. Oh yeah, me and Popstar got one. It's it's. A, I, I I seen something with you and Nayanti like freestyler one. Yeah, 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 that yeah, 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 I heard yeah, that. You yeah, got that one. I need another one though. So somebody gotta let him know. I just I literally just interviewed Brad and was like I didn't even know you knew who they was I was saying like we need more so he was like yeah I need some more shit too so I feel like y'all yeah, both you know what I'm yeah. saying so yeah we niggas yeah, definitely yeah. need that for sure but um I, 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 I fuck with man that's an Atlanta legend fire shout out to pop star um yeah. and, and and it's funny because I was literally just complaining about longer albums and you came with this and I it was too quick bless you. I was like, damn, I wish this ain't even in. You know what I'm saying? So you really do a great job at keeping my attention and just keeping, I feel like, people's attention. I see a lot of people say, I don't really like long albums, but, man, he, you know what I'm saying? I, I want it more. You feel me? Because nah, it's so diverse because Burning Desire sounds nothing like real love. Like, I don't even know what real love is. Like, like it's these songs. <laughs> it's these songs where I'm like, bro. What is happening right now? Like real, like you, you kind of like almost chopping, screwing like another version of real. Like it's nuts. You know what I'm saying? Like what made you do that, nigga? Um, I don't know. I feel like I think uh, an experience I enjoy like uh, deep. Hey, shout out Tony Sosa, man. Bless it, real quick, real quick. Tony Sosa. What's the killer, my boy? Come on, hey. I was about to leak some secrets, some top top information. I'm not gonna leak it. <laughs> but um, I think what, what, what that whole shit was was like there, there's a lot of moments where I'm at the crib playing shit on Ableton, and uh, I'm just like enjoying the moment. And uh, what somebody even told me before is. They'll hear me making a beat and hear all the transitions the beat goes through and like what like what it started off as to like what it did. And then uh I just thought about like, yeah, like why not like put something that like I would like be at the crib working on, like on some like kind of like funny shit or just like try and sit out, like throw that on the album. Cause it's like it's still a part of that whole story, you know what I mean? And then once I had made the beat and then did the love flip. I sent it to my uh, friend Shanice Fashion Spitter and she had put the poem on it and it just turned into like a uh, whole like 
that should turn to its own art piece kind of thing. It's very, very artful. And like I said, you got so much different stuff because what you say you are, you back in your singing bag. You know hey, what I'm saying? Bro. Also, bro, great video. Bro. Love the video. I love the video hey, for that. You know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, El, El Custo was in that, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, he was uh, in yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also shot Nayanti. I seen he was in that C19 in his model bag. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to that oh, boy, wow, man. man. So, you know, all y'all boys going up. But I, I, I love the singing on that. Also, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta apologize to somebody, man. I, I ain't know this nigga had it in him, man. So this happened recently with Nicholas Craven. I did not understand <laughs> Bodie James. I did not like Bodie James at all. He was like, bro, you're asleep. You need to go listen to, uh, what is it, Tech Mobile? I think it's the, um, it's the, I think it's the Tech Mobile when that him and Alchemist dropped. He was like, bro, that's crazy. You need to listen to that. And I'm like, all right. Uh, I was like, I'm my fault, Bodie. I ain't know, I, 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 I ain't know your game. I didn't know. And this album, I gotta, I gotta give an apology to somebody else because I didn't say, nah, this nigga don't got it. But I was wrong, man. Larry June, bro. I ain't know Larry June had that in on, bro. Now that was my fault, man. I was sleep on, buddy, oh, man. I was yeah. sleep on, cause that nigga, hey, he gave you about thirty two balls on that. That, that nigga, he ain't want to stop that rapping. Nigga slid, bro. That nigga slid. That nigga said, uh, said orange stones on my on my on my piece like a crushed soda. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I heard that. Shit. I was like, yeah. I was like, damn, I look you need to get my bread up. This shit get ridiculous. <laughs> this shit get ridiculous. It's funny because you talking about getting your bread up and not that this equates to getting your bread up, but this album feels like a celebration. Like this feels like almost like a victory lap. Like this feels like just some of the beats, the way you rapping. I'm like, man, this nigga this nigga feel like he's at the peak, not the peak, because I feel like you only get better, but I feel like you're at the mountaintop, and like you know it, and you're embracing it, you know what I'm saying, I feel like, kind of early in your career, you felt like, I felt like you was like, nigga was like, bro, I need to get this by any means necessary, I feel like now, you just kind of like, like we, like like we on our way, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, shout out to Navin, I feel like Navin, he, yeah, hey, that's, that, that's, that's the, the backbone of this shit, you know what I'm saying, and, and that's what I was going to say, how I would love for you to speak about Navin because I feel like you credit a lot. You credit him a lot about helping you get into where you at. So if you just you know what I'm saying, just platform yeah, right now, just talk about bro. No, nah, like, all right. So the first thing I said will be busting my head about Navin. He came across the idea that he wanted to manage me when he was 21, and I was like 17. So like. I just turned 25. Four years ago, I was 21. Nigga, I be thinking about if 21-year-old me had to manage a a young 17-year-old me, bro, nigga, we would not make it (laughs) out. Nigga, we would be stuck. Like, my nigga now been stopped smoking, bro. Like, he like, like, Bruh, and, and, and without getting too deep into shit, like, back then, like, we was really, like, in the in the shit, you know, like, we was really in that shit, and my friend came from, some, like, from, like, some other shit, and was still willing to, like, kick it in the shit, and, like, be with us in that shit, and, like, stood throughout the whole shit, you know what I mean, like... Mm-hmm. He he really like one of the people that I could say believed like believed in my shit from the start and, and, and never like gave up even like like just like that consistent belief, bro. Like that shit actually felt unconditional. It still feels unconditional, man. Like I, that's for real, my big brother. You know what I mean? Like what he does for me, anybody that I believe in, he believe in too. Type shit. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, I'm just grateful and I feel like kind of the model that we, we built as a musician manager like I even hate calling him my manager because he really just like my big brother on some shit but I don't like I mean like yeah, he definitely like on some business shit I gotta tell you he's my manager but <laughs> every guy but like that'd be the fire shit because uh, it'd be the ones like niggas we try to like hit him out bit on some like like uh, like niggas would be like oh like yeah like yeah 
everybody low-key think that a musician is an asshole or like, yeah, we got to get over one of the musicians. And my nigga that I've be like, bruh, like, y'all don't even get, like, we we in this email together. Like, like, like we both seeing this shit together. Like, <laughs> I'm like, bruh, like, like, yeah, just like, I don't know, man. That, that, that's really, that's really my brother, man. I really appreciate him. He believed in me and, like, we, Take, like taking this shit so far and I know there's still so much more to do and that's gonna happen just cause bro, just what happens when you believe in somebody bro. he's like a true testament to that shit see I don't know bro 1% as good as you do but every time I've interacted with him super duper nice to me super duper cool mm-hmm. and as somebody who's dealt with a bunch of managers especially rap managers they could be some of the most unprofessional just all over the place and I'm pretty sure you've seen it you know what I'm saying just yeah. 100%. Dealing with them, it's just like, I, I, be, I be feeling like <laughs> I'm privileged, low-key, bro, when it, when it comes to the manager artist shit. I definitely feel like a white person sometimes when I be seeing other niggas on their managers, like, on some, like, yeah. They're kind of like, yeah, I know, I know my shit busting right now. <laughs> yeah, I know my shit busting, bro. And that's really my twin, bro. Like, I can't lie. Like, that's really my twin, man. Like, and, like, just, just, I don't know, like, it changes everything, like, he 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 really cares about the artist. You know what I mean? Like he cares about the artist. And I think that right there is what like if if everybody knew what it took to actually be a manager, like what Navin is doing, yeah. man, a lot of managers wouldn't be managers, you know what I mean? Because they they don't got it in them. You know? Man. Like, shout yeah. out to him, man. He's and I, I remember one time I asked him for an interview with somebody he don't even work with. I forget who it was, but it was somebody that was like, he don't even work with him. He was like, I don't work with bro, but like, I, I like I know his people. Like, I get you in contact with him. I was like, you don't, gotta, you don't even got to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's, the, that, that's the dude, bro. If he believe in it, he going to try, bro. Shout out to him. And I'm so glad that you got somebody that believe in you because it's so many talented people who don't have people that believe in them. And that's why we don't know who they are because they didn't have that extra push they didn't have an extra person to guide them so I'm glad that you know what I'm saying you got a support oh, system bro. I'm so bro, I feel like the whole of New York City whole of the United States grateful for that man <laughs> <laughs> hey speaking of New York before I let you go I, I meant actually this earlier but you you were New York dude I feel like everybody from New York from the age of like 23 to like three, 23 and up has like watch battle rap did you grow up watching battle rap at all <coughs> uh, not really. Like I wasn't a super big fan, but all the homies really used to watch that shit. So I, I was like, kind of like background watch type shit. Gotcha. I always thought that shit was hilarious as fuck. But <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't get all the way down. Like, well, why was it so funny? <laughs> <laughs> what made it so funny to you? Just like, bro, like. That shit is like <laughs> some of the shit just be ridiculous, man. <laughs> be too ridiculous. <laughs> and then I'm the type of nigga that like, even if you think about like, bro, like, but like maybe I could get into it now because I feel like I, I loosened up a lot. But like, bro, I can't. I couldn't go from battle rap to like King Cruel back in the day, bro. I, I was like, but you know what's crazy? I could bump like I like I used to. I remember. Uh, like my tenth grade high school, like I used to listen to so much Twenty One Savage, bro. Like it was crazy, but like still, like hearing a nigga rap no beat behind him is just, uh, is just kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> it's <just> kind of <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Damn, a hey, tenth grade Twenty One Savage. That's like very early Twenty One Savage. Cause like I said, we like we, we like around the same age, and I remember around that time, I couldn't listen to too much of Brett because I was like, bro, I'm going to like murder somebody like I'm going to yeah, hurt I'm gonna somebody end up killing somebody no cap bro I'm not gonna lie that nigga I, like I used to get into school with so much confidence like yeah like I'm I like if a nigga play with me today we might actually we might actually find this nigga might like become a red out right now no cap. bro well, on red out when that nigga say he pull up to a nigga mama house and put some rounds in it that was one of my first time <laughs> hearing something like that 
I'm like, bro, this is it legal, bro? You can't say this on record, bro. <laughs> I don't think First Amendment protect this, bro. This nigga wild. Okay. He's like, fuck you, I'm about to bring that shit to school, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that is funny. Hey, you know what's yeah. crazy? I done said this on here before, but this really some Southern stuff, bro. I went to high school where niggas was toting around guns, and it was, like, normal. Like, the teachers knew niggas had guns on them. Like, it's so it's so crazy. So, like, if I get the South is wild, because I feel like in New York, I don't know, like, I feel like it's much more prevalent to see a gun in the South than it is in New yeah. York, right? Because, like, the, you, the laws. You, you, you would go to jail forever if you have a gun out here, bro. Like, but niggas used to do dumb shit in high school, like, it's the shit I used to hate I used to hear about all the time is like niggas would shoot to miss on purpose like also like cause they like yeah like if I actually hit this nigga in my life <laughs> <laughs> literally like niggas is like bro if I actually like if this nigga actually get hit like I'm done forever bro like it's crazy nigga was sending warning shots man yeah exactly bro which I, I like that's the end alright <laughs> That is hilarious, hey man. I I know um I know y'all boys got something to cook up tonight, so I don't want to hold you for too long. But uh, once again, man, I appreciate you for coming through. You got uh any last words for the people out there, man? Let it be known. Uh, any last words, man? Keep being positive. Keep having fun. Uh, keep doing the damn thing Believe in your people Believe in yourself Keep pushing out that good art Promoting that good art Doing what you gotta do Shout out to my boy Eric the Young Guy A.K.A. Eric the Young Legend We out here doing the damn thing man. You ready to know Hey man for everybody watching right now I appreciate it Until next time I say what I mean I mean what I say Haters gonna hate and players gonna play Y'all holla at your boy. And also, go watch Snow on the Bluff if you never have. Great movies. We out.